Hey everyone, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Adelina and I make videos about living in my tiny house on wheels. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I have been in my tiny house now for about a year and a half. And this is my second winter. I'm into my second winter in my tiny house. So I thought maybe it was time to do a video on the small household appliances that I use the most and the ones that I think are worth the money for me and maybe for you. Some of these I use once a week, uh, others I use multiple times a week, even daily. And I hope that you like this video. If you're interested in any of the products, I'll put a link uh, below if, it, if I can, um, if I can find them. And I hope you enjoy it. The first two appliances I want to talk about are my Smeg appliances. I have the kettle and the toaster. Now, are they better than any other kettle or toaster? Probably not. But I just love Smeg appliances. I love the look of them, how sleek and kind of retro they are. They're beautiful. And my philosophy is if you're going to have something sitting out on your counter, especially in such a small space where you can see everything from everywhere, basically, that um, they should be beautiful and functional. So I really love these. I got the cream color because I thought that I had probably more than enough color going on in here with my Fiesta Ware dishes. Now I used to not have a kettle. I used to just heat my water for tea in my Keurig, um, but now I realize why people think that's a bad idea because it makes much better tea if you actually boil your water. These are the small appliances number one and two that I use pretty much daily. They are beautiful and functional and for me worth the money. The next small appliance that I absolutely love and I actually wanted one of these for years and years before I got one. Um, I got a gift card one year from work to the bay the Hudson's Bay Company here in Canada. And I used that plus a little extra cash to buy this. Um, this is the KitchenAid stand mixer. And it's the one where you can actually take this top off and put in pasta makers and grinders and things like that. So it's the heavy duty one. And I use this basically once a week-ish because it's just so handy. Um, it comes with this little splash guard, which is awesome. And it comes with, sorry if that's really loud, comes with three little uh, mixer heads. And the one I use the most, I will have to admit, is the dough hook one, because I like to make my own bread and pizza dough. And this just makes life so much easier because I basically put everything in there, turn it on, walk away 10 minutes later. It's all needed. Um, not that you can't need it by hand and not that I haven't. Again, it's beautiful. And it's one of those things that I like to have on my countertop. I got this beautiful kind of robin's egg blue, which I just love. You may have noticed that I like colors um, and I have to control myself. But it's uh, like I say, it's one of those things that's super useful and beautiful and I actually you know invested in this because I think when I bought it it was just under $500 Canadian but it was worth every cent like I say I had a gift card for a couple hundred dollars um, and I waited years and years using a hand mixer and didn't know what I was missing until I got one of these so this is the third on my list of favorite small household appliances kitchen appliances in this case that I have and that I think are for me really useful. Okay, we're on to number four. This Keurig single cup coffee maker is something that get you, gets used multiple times a day in my tiny house. Um, I used to have one of the big ones with the water reservoir, but it was huge and I just knew that I didn't have room for that in my tiny house and I wanted something sleek and thin. So I ordered this online. It comes with uh, a little cup holder in here that you put the Keurig K-Cups in. I don't use Keurig K-Cups. Um, I think they're, in my opinion, they're wasteful and they're expensive and the coffee in there is kind of meh at best. So you can pop this out. And then what I did was I, I online I bought this from Keurig, this little adapter. 
and it comes with a little basket inside and so you can use this to make your own uh, make coffee with your own coffee and it just pops in here like that and then it goes on so I keep my coffee here it's much more economical much more planet friendly and uh, I think the coffee is better um, so the cured coffee single cup maker is one of my favorite appliances it gets used a lot and it works really well um, and it comes in multiple colors I bought the red just because <laughs> it fits so nicely back here it's tucked out of the way when I, I need it I just pull it out it's the perfect size of a coffee maker for a small house and because I can use my own coffee and not have to buy the k-cups um, it's really like I say very environmentally friendly and something that I really like to use Number five on my list of my favorite small appliances for my tiny house is this little microwave. A classic design. It's meant to look retro. It's small. It fits in here perfectly. In fact, when I was having my shelf built by my uh, carpenter, he actually measured this so we could make sure that it fit here and when I was having my house built because I knew I was going to have my microwave on an open shelf I made sure that they put a plug-in back here so it can plug in it doesn't have a ton of settings but all I ever do is heat things in there I don't actually cook in my microwave um, and it gets used a fair amount do I use it every single day uh, actually I do because I reheat my coffee because you may have noticed <laughs> that especially when I'm making my videos I talk and then I forget to drink my coffee it gets cold and then I have to heat it up so uh, again one of my favorite small appliances for my tiny house it's functional and beautiful and when you're in a tiny house where everything's open I think that that's kind of important number six my Vitamix blender you've seen this in uh, some of my videos and I use this well a lot <laughs> an awful lot because I make my own coffee creamer which I made a video on and the other day I made an alfredo sauce a cashew based alfredo sauce non-dairy and the Vitamix blender is just so incredible for blending things super smooth so there's no grittiness or anything like that when I make smoothies I love my Vitamix because I know this is going to be controversial but I like berries but the seeds and berries gross me out <laughs> they really do and when I I used to have an old KitchenAid mixer and uh, when I would make my smoothies with blueberries and raspberries and blackberries there would be tons of seeds left in them <laughs> and then I would have to strain my smoothie I know but I can't help it the texture of the seeds grossed me out anyways uh, then I bought my Vitamix and it pulverizes all of those seeds so now I don't have to do that uh, which is just an extra bonus but my Vitamix blender is I think one of the most uh, used and important pieces of small you know small appliances in my kitchen I think if I had to get keep only one thing I would keep my Vitamix because it's so valuable for me um, and I just love it I actually have a second canister that's meant for grains so I can grind up oats and well any other grains to be honest I've never used it it came with the set uh, but I bought this at Costco when they had a special um, they're not inexpensive but because I eat plant-based and I make a lot of sauces with soaked nuts having a Vitamix just makes life so much easier and makes cooking so much more pleasant um, and I used, used to have and I still do actually have a magic bullet that sometimes I use for just small things uh, sauces and dressings and things like that this is just so much better so it was an investment but for me because I like to cook and because of the way I cook and the way I eat having this is just so handy so I would probably get rid of everything else and just keep my Vitamix so I maybe should have had that as number one I don't think anybody's going to be surprised with number seven on my list and it's my instant pot I have the instant pot IP dual um, and it's the one with the yogurt function and I have made yogurt in it plenty of times um, 
I make a soy milk yogurt and I add a little maple flavoring and vanilla and a little maple syrup and it's delicious. Uh, but the Instant Pot is something that gets used at least once a week, often more. The other day I made steamed potatoes in there to make mashed potatoes for a shepherd's pie I was making. Yesterday I made a stew. Please don't be afraid of electronic pressure cookers. They're not going to explode on you. They're super safe. And my cat is in the litter box scratching. Hold on. We done? Soph? Good. We can continue now. Anyways, the Instant Pot is really easy to use. Um, it's super safe. It's really convenient. I have the six quart and uh, that's perfect for me, even though it's just me now, but when I had the kids at home, it was great for stews and chilies and curries and like I say, steaming vegetables, making beans from dry, which I do all the time, making rice. This replaced a lot of, of other things that I had in my old place that I never used. I had a rice cooker I never used, I had a crock pot I never used. Um, this just does it all. And the nice thing about it, well, one of the nice things is the fact that when you cook in here, it doesn't heat up your house in the summer and it also doesn't when you boil things like boiled potatoes on your stove or when you're making beans or stews that releases a lot of moisture into the air even with a hood fan but that means that you have steam and in a tiny house like i've said before uh, moisture condensation is one of your greatest enemies and in the winter you can't always have your windows open so that's what's nice about this. When I'm done cooking and I want to do the release, if I'm doing a quick release, you can let it uh, release pressure naturally and there's no steam created. But when I do want a quick release for whatever recipe, I just pick it up and I put it on the stove, I turn the fan on and I do the quick release and I don't have to worry about it. They come in lots of different models. Again, I will try and link every product down below. Um, but I really like the one that has the yogurt setting. If you plan on making yogurt and I hope you do because it's super easy and really delicious and you know what's in it and I don't think you need a super fancy one I think you just need a basic instant pot it has all the presets on here but to be honest with you I just use the manual setting and then choose the, the type of pressure high or low or um, the uh, and the time and that's how I use it I've used it in a couple of recipes that I've made uh, while I was chatting on the channel and I will do that in the future I'm sure you will see me use this a lot um, this is probably number two of things I wouldn't get rid of if I had to choose the Vitamix would still be number one the Instant Pot is a close second because I use it so much and there's so many things you can do with it I did buy this steamer basket I was just using a uh, regular one of those foldable foldable steamers but this is so much easier to use especially when I'm making a lot of of potatoes or steaming vegetables because you can just lift it up really easily but you don't have to you certainly don't need to buy special accessories for your instant pot they come with little muffin things they come with um, cake pans I don't really bake in here because the thing with baking in an instant pot is you're using water to cre create steam which creates the pressure so nothing really browns and baked goods get really stay fairly dense so I don't use it for that but I use it for so many other things um, and they do now have a, a special attachment lid that creates an air fryer but I've heard mixed reviews about it and uh, to be honest with you I won't be investing in that I well you're about to see I have one of those already it stores away easily make sure when you're storing it you pull out the the ceiling ring so that um, there's no it can air out and you store it like this to make sure that no smells sort of build up in there and then it gets tucked away um, and I use it all the time so as I alluded my next favorite small appliance is my air fryer I have the power air fryer XL and I used to have another one it was smaller when I was first thinking about whether or not oops I wanted an air fryer I was really debating whether or not it was worth it I had heard some really good things about them and they seemed like a useful tool kitchen 
appliance, but I wasn't sure that it was worth the money. So I actually went down to Walmart and bought myself the least expensive one I could find, figuring that if I didn't like it, I would give it to my oldest son. And I found that I used it all the time. So I ended up still giving that one to my oldest son so I could buy a bigger one with a bigger basket. So these are great. Basically what they are is a mini, sorry, is a mini convection oven. There's a, an element in here and the basket sort of is separate, separated from this bowl so that air can circulate. So what do I make in here? I make any kind of frozen food that you want to crisp up. So uh, veggie egg rolls or um, any, if you're making chicken nuggets or anything like that. I have used small little nan breads and made mini pizzas in here. Um, I really want to try making something like cinnamon buns or something like that. Um, I did try making an apple crisp in there. They're really great because again, they don't really heat up your house. They're really easy to clean. Anything you can make in your oven, you can make in a smaller size in your air fryer. And for a tiny house, that's awesome. Heats up super fast and cools off super fast. It's like I say, easy to clean. I have storage for it. When I was building my tiny house, I knew exactly which appliances I was gonna have to store. So I knew I had the air fryer, I knew I had the Instant Pot, I knew I had the Vitamix that would have to go somewhere. And so the corner cabinet over here, and if you've watched my, my full video or my kitchen video, <clears throat> you'll know what I'm talking about, is huge. And I made sure that the sh shelves were tall enough to store the air fryer and the Instant Pot, which are basically the same height. And so I can tuck them away uh, and I don't have to have them on the counter. If I had to have them on the counter, uh, that would be a problem. And so I made sure to build my kitchen to accommodate the appliances that I use the most. So I use the air fryer as much as I use the Instant Pot. The reason that it doesn't fall into that category of I would you know, keep no matter what is the fact that I do have an oven so I can bake in there. But it's just so much easier to cook in that. And it, like see, you don't have to preheat anything. It really is very, very fast. If you've used a convection oven, you know that they cook faster and at a lower temperature. So whenever I'm making a recipe um, or you know any pre-made product, I make sure to lower the temperature and shorten the cooking time and just check on it. And really, if, you, if you're making fries or home potatoes, like if you're just gonna peel some potatoes and you're gonna roast some or cauliflower, so you're gonna make cauliflower wings, buffalo cauliflower wings, yum. Um, you just, you put them in here and then halfway through, you pull it out and you shake it and you put it back in and that's it. <laughs> I know this isn't brain surgery. However, it's such a handy little appliance that it's one that I really recommend. I use it. Now, is it for everybody? Maybe not, but these are just the ones that I use the most in the tiny house, ones that get used multiple times a week, if not daily. So my Dyson vacuum is the last on my list of small appliances, household appliances that I would not be without um, and that I think are definitely worth the money. I have the Dyson 7. It's not a fancy one. It's not the most powerful one. Um, and it's got the brush for the floor. It does work on rugs and everything as well. Because it's... it's uh, cordless. It's so easy to use. I keep the charger in my closet, my bedroom closet. It's plugged in there and it just, you know, every once in a while I just pull it off and I charge it. It takes no time at all to charge and the charge lasts a really long time and it works really well on cat hair and the litter that Sophie likes to kick up out of her litter box. It is so useful and it was definitely worth the money. I bought it on sale and um, I think I got it for under $300. You can just, uh, I'm not gonna do it, but you lift this up and the canister bottom opens. I'm not gonna do it for obvious reasons. And it's easy to empty, it's easy to clean, the filters and everything like that. I've had it for mm, almost two years. I use it multiple times a day because I always vacuum up her litter in the morning and then like just now after she goes she kicks them up and 
I just keep this standing in my bathroom and I grab it and I give it a quick vacuum. If I had a vacuum with a cord, it would just be such a hassle to always be pulling it out and looking to plug it in. My friends joke that I can just stand in my kitchen and basically just go around in a circle and vacuum my whole house. Uh, not quite true, but almost. <laughs> So full disclosure, these are not the only small appliances I have in my tiny house. I also have a juicer and a little tiny panini press. Can't remember what else. Um, and my magic bullet. Those are things that I still have. I had in my previous home and I still have, um, but I have actually not used other than the magic bullet, like I said, for making a few sauces here and there, just cause I'm lazy. There are other appliances that I have that I don't really use and that I'm seriously considering getting rid of in 2021. In fact, I will be doing the minimalism challenge in 2021. So on January 1st, I'll get rid of one thing. On January 2nd, I will get rid of two things over and above the one I got rid of on day one and so on. I have a lot to get rid of. I realized I brought over a ton of cookbooks and just, you know, how crap accumulates no matter what size your house is. So I don't think it'll be hard. Like I say, they don't have to be big things. They just have to be things. And it's often the small things that really build up and cause a lot of stress, at least for me in my tiny house. I thought you might be interested in knowing the small household appliances that I really find value in and that I think were worth the money, at least for me. Um, I really struggled to find a 10th because these lists are always nice when they're round numbers, but I could only find nine that were really the ones that I use the most and that I think were worth the money. And your list may be very different than mine, but for me, these are the ones um, that I use the most. If you like this video, if you like my videos at all, please subscribe. Only 85% of you are subscribed and it would be awesome if you would take the time to click that subscribe button and join my family because that would be awesome. And I will talk to you next time. So, what can I do for you? I'm in the middle of a video.